Welcome to Dead Creepy Podcast. Dead Creepy is the paranormal talk show brought to you from South Wales, UK, where we will be discussing the latest in paranormal news and spooky topics to chill your soul. My name is Claire Barrand, and this is my co-host and sister, Lindsay Smith. Hi, Linz. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. That's good to hear very good to hear well this is our very first ever podcast isn't it um well you could say that (laughs) or you could tell you could tell the truth (laughs) oh i guess so well actually it's probably like the third one isn't it we were (laughs) yeah i've lost count (laughs) okay well um basically the story goes that um we tried recording this this is the third time now and uh the first two times, um, it didn't actually record. So we were no. happily chatting away and did everything we planned. And then I realised that whatever software I've been using to record out, we're talking <laughs> via Skype, even though we only live five minutes up the road from each other, it crashed. So if there's anybody out there that would like to help us with technical stuff, please feel free to come forward because we haven't got a clue, have we? <laughs> No. But if this happens to work this time, and this is the first one that does actually manage to make it out there, mm-hmm. I thought that we should title this show that there is a first time for everything. And I thought we could start off by talking about our very first paranormal experiences because we're sisters. Okay, yep. Obviously, we grew up in the same house and we most of the things that have happened to us, and there's a lot that's happened to us, we can't talk about yeah. all of it in this show, um, but we could talk about the first time we ever thought we saw what we thought was a ghost. Absolutely, yeah. Do it you... was, yeah, it was the same time for both of us. It was, yeah. In fact, we've even been in... A magazine about this, haven't we? What was oh, it? we have. <laughs> yeah. What was that magazine called? Um, was it Take a Break or was it? Um, oh, it was that. It's Fate magazine. One of those. Fate. One fate of those like um, Kill Me Now magazines, you know. Tabloidy thing, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was. It, it's obviously got, the sales will have gone up <laughs> <laughs> since we were in it. <laughs> And but just yeah. for the record, I didn't wet the bed. Oh. As as per that article says. No, it did say that, you... <laughs> <laughs> that was a totally separate occasion, but we won't talk about no, that. No, no, there's no need to talk about that, is there? Well, how old were you at the time? Um, I would say eight or nine. So I'm three years older than you. Yeah. And we... If I remember rightly, we were sharing a bedroom. There was a reason why um, you went in your own room, but quite often we would share a room anyway. Um, yeah, there had been there'd been a creepy crawly incident in my bedroom. Yeah, um, a millipede had been spotted, so I wouldn't sleep in there. <laughs> was it actually a millipede? See, I thought it, it was, was a an e- It was an earwig, but I suppose no, it doesn't it matter. Proper... <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. But you know, perfectly rational. I am not setting foot in that bedroom until yeah. said creature is removed. So I slept on the floor in your room. Yeah, and we always did this anyway. There was various excuses because um, we just had a giggle, didn't we? We just yeah, um, we had fun. So you, you'd have a mattress on the floor, and this house, the house that we lived in at the time. Um, wasn't particularly, I wouldn't have said it was particularly haunted. This wasn't the antique shop that um, I knew we did live in an antique shop and that's another, a whole other story. But this was a, a an interim house, wasn't it, in Manchester? Yeah, in it was between... like a, a 1920s, 1930s uh, semi-detached. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't, I w- so I wouldn't particularly have said that the property was haunted 
Um, no. with, there wasn't a bad atmosphere or anything like that. However, this is where we um, did actually have an experience. And I just remember waking up that night. We'd both fallen asleep. And my memory of it is that I woke up and instantly there was an atmosphere. There was something that made me instantly terrified. Mm -hmm. And at the end of my bed and yours, because we were both on, you know, next to each other, you were on the floor, there was a black figure. It was hooded figure. It was. And it wasn't particularly tall. It was, I would say, it was under five foot, I would say. Yeah, it was. It, It was. It wasn't, it wasn't tall. No face, no features. Nothing about it at all that I remember except a black, if you imagine a classic black hooded figure, um, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Um, Now, this is the bit that we'll explain later why um, we've rethought this. I thought at the time, I remember being absolutely terrified. I remember several minutes, I don't know how long, um, Mm -hmm. of being under the duvet, putting my hands over my ears, closing my eyes and sort of humming to myself to block out all my senses so that it's not there, it's not there. I'm absolutely terrified. And and then you remember something similar, don't you? Well, that's it, because I woke up and it was quite unusual for me to wake during the night. I was, you know, a a heavy sleeping child. Um, And I woke up, I could hear you rocking and humming um it, mm. i knew it was something that y- you would did you, you did used to kind of rock to get yourself to sleep I did. um and I, I could hear you doing that i saw this figure i i was absolutely petrified and i hid under my duvet um yeah. and just willed it to go away and i remember for me i yeah. remember sweating and children don't really sweat it's no. quite unusual mm-hmm. so I remember thinking this is, you know this is really weird or you know what's this yeah. perspiration thing I that was a strange thing as well but then the bizarre thing was next thing I woke up in the in yeah. in the morning and it was like how on earth did I go to sleep I was that terrified yeah me too and I can remember waking up and saying to you oh Lindsay there was a ghost in the in the room and you you were like yeah yeah I saw it as well and we both you know we compared stories and we've never ever we've never ever changed that story that is exactly and and our friends we've still got we've got friends now that knew Mm -hmm. was then and they will verify um that they remember that night they remember us telling them as we're telling it now, it hasn't been elaborated. That's that. That is how it happened, and and I think I probably decided over the years. Well, I must have fainted because I don't know how I went. Yeah. How did I go to sleep that's, afterwards? That's exactly how I've always told it as well. Yeah. I must have passed out because um, I was that afraid. And and since then, I mean, there were there were other things that I think we decided things. So as we got as we got more into the paranormal um, mm-hmm. as we started researching as we got older at the t- at the time I remember having a curiosity and I was probably about 12 at the time and I'd started secondary school and I had been dabbling with a Ouija board in the in, yeah. the, in the school library um, yeah. and I think um, our grandma we told our mum we told our grandma and grandma bought bought us bible and told mm-hmm. us to say the Lord's Prayer at night. And these are all things that are, are, were comforting to us as children because it was like, okay, we've told an adult, they believe us, and everything, yeah. everything's going to be okay. Looking back on it now, after doing much more research, um, I'm reading at the moment books by uh, Jacques Vallée and um, Linda Moulton Howe and various things. I'm starting to err uh, towards alien abduction actually now. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm not laughing because it's funny because this is genuinely the way I'm starting to think this was no, mm-hmm. this was no ghost. And that would explain how we had missing time and didn't, and, and went to sleep 
and don't remember yeah. anything else. It's certainly a possibility. Um, I remember probably maybe 20 years ago, a medium that we told about it, his theory was that um, apparitions drain human energy in order to appear. Yeah. And that's why we fell asleep, that was that we were literally drained of our energy. Mm. So that was another theory. It is. Um, I would um, say, I mean, we would be here all night if we talked about other experiences we've had but those are the one those are the things it's like a jigsaw puzzle isn't it mm. and there are other pieces that fit with this story um that are now starting to suggest to me okay more the alien abduction thing the alien i've always believed it was a ghost always yes yeah um now I'm not so sure. I think there's other things that have happened to us, um, you know, that definitely suggest to me that it's something else. But I'd love to get somebody's opinion on this and mm -hmm. whether or not, would you ever go for regression and find oh, out? Oh, I'd love to. I'd be, yeah, I'd love to go for regression. I'd love to find out about my past lives in particular. But, but yeah, maybe to fill in that missing time on that night but what yeah if, what if the memory that it brought back was so, so horrific and maybe it's better that we don't know um mm. that's what terrifies me but then part of me thinks well actually it's me uh, it's i should i own my own memories nobody somebody else should not take that away from me yeah um, and I think one of the things about alien abductees is that they they are made to not remember for, for various reasons. Um, but when they do, but, they can but deal. But why with do it. we why do we remember the initial part then? The the seeing the figure. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I don't know. There's bits that are, are not explained, and I think that's a lot of people come forward because there's the, there's little bits that they can't explain. Mm. before the memory was taken you know right. they remember driving along next thing you know they are uh, they wake up at the side of the road and their clothes are back to front that kind of a, a right. scenario uh, some people yeah. wake up in the morning and their clothes are on inside out and right. you know and they don't know what the hell's happened to them it's just you know just throwing it out there we might <laughs> yeah we might have been I often wake oh, yeah. up and my pyjamas are on inside out, but that's just because I've gone to bed after too much wine, I think. <laughs> Do you reckon? Yeah, but, yeah. Have, yeah, but Linz, I have wine and I don't wake up with my pyjamas on inside out. See, I think that's a sign. That's definitely a sign. Oh, no. Oh, my God. So you've never told me that before, really? Is that true? Well, not, a lot, not loads of times, but it's definitely happened where I've 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 looked at myself and laughed because my pajamas are on inside out. <laughs> oh my god! No, you see, I oh just put god. it down to being a bit dim. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't know is that you've been taken to a craft in the night and you've had things harvested. <laughs> And there are millions of little Lindsay slash greys <laughs> running around there. And all you oh, no. all, all your memory of it. I mean they could God, they could at least leave us with a nice memory, couldn't they? Why yeah. can't they make us think we've spent the night with Brad Pitt or somebody <laughs> like that? Don't you think that'd be better? <laughs> I mean, let us think we've had some a really amazing, surreal experience. But you do get weirdos. Maybe these celebrity stalkers that think that they have spent the night with Brad Pitt have had that <laughs> memory implanted into their heads. Right, well, I want, abduction. I want it. So if any aliens are listening to me now, <laughs> next time you I think you're better off saying you don't have permission to take me. <laughs> okay, yeah, you don't have permission to take me, but if, if you do, can you make sure that my memory is... I spent the night with Brad Pitt. <laughs> okay, uh, man, you. I don't want. I don't want to sort of take away from the seriousness of it because no. it is a serious topic, and and I am, 
I'm doing a lot of research. I'm, you know, I, I'm reading John Mack's book at the moment, and and it really fascinates me. It really does. And if there's, I don't think there's, I don't know if there's a way of stopping this from happening. But I do believe it does happen, and um, and it's quite scary, really. We don't have a control mm. over this. But we'll talk, we'll delve into that more in in other episodes, I think, because it is something that. I am um, fascinated with at the moment. So, moving on, I think we should talk about the paranormal news. In oh yeah, what's what's been in the paranormal news this week? Hang on now. Okay, I've got a jingle here for this somewhere. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on. Are you ready for this? Uh huh. Para news. Para news. Right. So, what's been happening in para news this week, Lynn's? Okay. Um, well, I've seen um, on an awful lot of these um, paranormal Facebook groups um, a viral picture. Yeah. It's called um, Cambridge Girl in the Woods. Uh huh. And basically, um, it's a photograph of a mysterious looking girl. Part of her leg is faded out um, and she's been captured in, in these woods. And the story behind it is um, a landowner. In, mm. Unfortunately, it's not Cambridge, UK. It's an American Cambridge in New York State. And Why is that? He, for, that's fortunate for <laughs> us, but not for them. <laughs> but go on, yeah. <laughs> well, look, we can't go and investigate if it's not in the UK. No, no. But anyway... He, a landowner, he set up um, something called a trail cam, which takes like periodic stills of of an area. Yeah, like motion sensors. For yeah, yeah, things like that. Things, yeah. Um, so he's got one of those set up on his land, and he uses this land for hunting deer and things. So you know, there's there's guns going off and whatnot. Um, he was checking through his his photos, and he found this one one image of this girl. Yeah. Um, and he was a bit concerned because it it's not safe for people to be wandering in this woods. No. So he took it, he took it to the police and said, can, you know, can you find out who this is? Um, and, and tell him, boy, you get off my land. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Only he wouldn't sound like that, would he? Cause he's not from Cornwall, is he? <laughs> <laughs> so the, anyway, somehow the picture got released onto the internet as these things do. It, it's gone viral yeah. people it, mediums are looking at it they're saying that you know this child has been murdered out there you know she's been mm. you know raped pillaged and murdered oh my this God. is this is serious so it's been it's been kicking off for about a week yeah anyway someone's debunked it okay <laughs> I like a nice debunking. Um, I, me too. <laughs> <laughs> the grandfather of the child has come forward and admitted that they were out walking in the woods and that she's not a ghost. She's a perfectly living person. Oh. And they were just out walking. So, but you know what's going to happen? Yeah. This, the original story is going to do the rounds for the next three or four years. Yeah, yeah. And it'll <laughs> all, all kick off. All, absolutely it's going to kick off in all the groups people are going oh don't you know that's been debunked <laughs> that was debunked absolutely years ago man years ago but you know what How it's like These things, they, they, once it's out there it doesn't go away does it well i'd be a bit embarrassed if i was one of those psychics that were saying that, oh she's <laughs> yeah. been murdered in the woods and oh i know i know i've got i get a feeling from this yeah well they how how do how did they explain it that mm. they got this or i guess they're going to say well i did get a feeling and there is a girl in that woods that was murdered and i was picking up on her energy <laughs> yeah. you know yeah I guess. Oh, how embarrassing. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it was debunked because, you know, it's good to, to, well, to find out the truth because that's what we're here for as paranormal investigators, which you and I are. We're not just armchair investigators. We do actually get out there. and Truth seekers. We are truth seekers. And if, if something's debunkable, 
do it because it makes those other things all the more mysterious yeah. when when there's just yeah. no explanation. But we well, could take this opportunity to ask any of our listeners if they've seen a paranormal story and they can debunk it, let us know. Because we love a good yeah. debunk bunking we do we love a good debunking in fact we could do a whole segment debunk <laughs> a good debunking let's do we a should. good debunk let's do a damn good debunking every show <laughs> Fantastic. absolutely great idea well i've got a story that hasn't been debunked yet um this is something that's been in the news this week in fact you know what it must be true because it's made it into the daily express Oh. Now, this is about um, Mothman-type sightings in Chicago. Mm. And um, the story goes that three separate witnesses have reported seeing a huge man-sized bird. Um, it's been described as resembling the legendary creature that inspired the book and film, The Mothman Prophecies. Ooh. The reports are being investigated by the US-based Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. MUFON, as we know, is the world's largest organisation dedicated to UFO and alien research, but also looks at other paranormal cases reported to it, which I didn't know. Um, the Mothman creature stems from West Virginia folklore and was a legendary creature reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area from November the 12th, 1966 to December the 15th, 1967. The first newspaper report was published in the Point Pleasant Register dated November the 16th, 1966, titled Couples See Man-Sized Bird... dot 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 creature... dot dot mm -hmm. dot something. Okay, so they yeah. didn't know... It was later popularised by John Keel in his 1995 book, The Mothman Prophecies, which mm -hmm. claimed there were supernatural events related to the sightings. And then it was turned into a film starring Richard Gere. Yeah. Did you ever watch I've that? I've seen the film. It's very... Yeah, I really good? enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a good film. Definitely. So Roger Marsh, MUFON director of communications, said, a Mothman-type creature is being reported in Chicago by three separate witnesses over a four-hour period. Now, that's key to me. According to three witness reports from the MUFON witness reporting database, the cases took place between 10 p.m. on April 15th and 10, 2 a.m. Sorry, on the April 16th. So, it says, please... Kicking out time. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's kicking out time. <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> it's well actually I don't know in America they've got 24 hour licenses surely oh have they well I, I don't, don't know. know maybe so they didn't back then it's not out time mm. oh well it says please be aware of all case details until an investigation is completed so at this point in the investigation a hoax cannot be ruled out so that's important to know the first witness was out on Lake Michigan with her husband and two other couples celebrating a friend's birthday. So, yeah, she'd been on the lash. <laughs> but that aside, she said, we were about two miles out on the lake, just off Montrose at about 10 p.m. We were enjoying ourselves when I happened to look up and saw what looked like a giant bat. And not mm -hmm. like a fox bat. This bat was as tall as my husband who is six foot four or even bigger oh my god she doesn't know. know how tall her husband is <laughs> well, <laughs> no i think she means the bat the oh, bat it? was six foot four or even bigger oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> she said it was solid black with eyes that seemed to reflect the moonlight okay this Bat, she said, circled the boat three times in a complete silence before heading off towards Montrose, and it quickly blended into the night sky and was gone in seconds. About five minutes after seeing the creature, the same witness saw a bright green object travelling north to south at the horizon. Okay, um, if it was that alone, I'd probably have a few questions to ask, but anyway, she did say... I began feeling this overwhelming sensation of dread and told my husband that I felt it was prudent that we get off the water as quickly as possible. <laughs> yeah, I would, especially yeah. if you're out drinking. 30 minutes later, though, 
another witness was hanging out with my boys and a few friends in Chicago at 10.30pm, as you do. And she said, as we talked about work and our families, we heard what sounded like a bird flapping its wings. Mm -hmm. One of my homies yelled out that he saw a huge lechuza over by the road. What's the, a lechuza? Okay, the lechuza is a Mexican Mexican urban legend or myth oh. a, about an old woman who can turn into a giant black bird. Mm. She added, we walked over there and saw what looked like a huge owl. As we walked up to it, to it this owl... They walked up to it? I know. Well, yeah, that's what's making me think, oh, come on now, did you actually walk up to it? But they did. They walked up to it. The owl stood up on two feet and looked right at us. We saw what looked like a huge lechuza, except it was about six foot tall and really big. It had large glowing red eyes that were completely freaking everybody out. Okay. Oh my God. The third report was 2 a.m. on April 16th. The man said, I arrived for work at 2 a.m. on the Chicago International Produce Market just off Damon and as I walked towards the parking lot, a bunch of guys were staring up at the sky. I looked up to see what they were looking at and saw the biggest freaking owl I've ever seen. I'm six foot two and I'm guessing this thing was at least a foot taller than me. It was completely black, except for it having bright yellowish slash reddish eyes like a cat. It stood mm. there for a minute or two, staring at everyone before shooting up into the sky and disappearing. It made everyone feel very uneasy and only took off after some guys threw some rocks at it. <laughs> okay, it had, do. it had wings on it like an owl, only bigger, and you could hear it flap those wings when it took off. Ilionis... Is that right, Ilionis? Illinois. Illinois. Oh, my God, really? Okay. (laughs) Illinois. Oh, yeah, I did that on purpose, guys. (laughs) Illinois. (laughs) Illinois. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Illinois. Thank God one of us is sober. Illinois. (laughs) I just killed it. Illinois MUFON State Director Sam Maranto and other staff members are investigating the. I'm the only guessing. I can't. I can't see what you're reading. But yeah, it is Illinois. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Marsh added, "This account is taken merely from the early witness reports filed with MUFON." Please remain sceptical until witness interviews have been conducted and more case evidence is assembled. And actually, since Mm -hmm. that article, two more sightings have come forward. So I'm really, I am actually really excited about this. Um, So I think we should follow this, this story. But that... That's the older story, is it? Or is that the, the modern one? No, 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 that was the modern one. No, the, Yeah, it oh. referred to the, the older story in the beginning because there's so much correlation and so much similarity. Yeah. But those three Absolutely. those three accounts that I just read out to you happened very recently, literally oh, wow. couple, in the last couple of weeks. And there's been two more since. So, yeah, oh, wow. it's definitely something worth following. And it's easy to dismiss people maybe Mm. were drunk maybe they were smoking something I don't know but when you've got clusters of sightings yeah you have to take it seriously and obviously that's what MUFON are doing so they 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 are quite rightly saying just uh, don't jump to any conclusions until we've conducted our research but that that's exactly what they'll do and they do it well um they're very credible so yeah god maybe we need to send them some smudge sticks or something well, they'd need to be bloody big smudge sticks, wouldn't they? We so, could do an appeal. Do you reckon? Do you think you can get <laughs> yeah. a smudge stick that's like, it needs to be at least 20 feet tall yeah. to be any effect from something that big? Well, I mean, obviously we know that uh, it's important to debunk stuff, as we've said, and um you know Lindsay and and we're we're excited to announce we've actually got our very own parapsychologist who is willing to come on the show 
and he's he's been listening for the last um hopefully he's been listening for the last I hope so, um, yeah. the last section um and i've asked i did i said to to him would you just come on give us a comment um if there's anything you you can add because it is important to get a skeptic's view mm, absolutely so, yeah so i'm going to ring him and let's see if we can get over to um to get his view bear with me skeptic's view Hello, um, I'm hoping that that's Daryl Whitebottom. Can you hear me? Daryl, hello, welcome to the show. My name's Daryl Whitebottom. I'm a paranormal sceptic and a debunker of ghosts. That's fantastic, Daryl. I've just introduced you to our listeners and um, we're really excited to have you on our podcast. Thank you very, very much. Um, now, you've told Lindsay and I that you have got a degree in para- parapsychology. Sorry. Um, where did you study that? Um, it was just down village hall, wasn't it? Um, okay. Yeah, but Daryl, fantastic. Well, Daryl, do you have any other do you have any other qualifications? I also play bass guitar for my band, the International Bootcracks. Okay. Oh, brilliant! That sounds fab. Um, Daryl, I hope you were listening to our our discussion earlier, um, especially with regards to the Mothman type sightings in Chicago. Um, have you got any? comments on what we were discussing what are your thoughts please i think i'd have to have a look at the evidence it's probably an hoax yeah it's very very possibly it is a it, hoax it's yeah. likely it is likely but it is you know. likely to be um mm. but thank you for that um have you got have you got to go daryl I'm sorry to keep you... If you could come back on the show, though, that would be fantastic. Hey, got to go because my pot noodle's ready. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, fair enough. But, you know, whatever you, you can add would be absolutely fantastic. Oh, he's yeah. gone. I just heard him put the phone it's down. Gone. Thanks, yeah, Daryl, for that. Um, Thank uh, you, Daryl. That's very exciting. We've got our very own parapsychologist on the show. That's- brilliant yeah he didn't have much to say this week but i'm sure we can get him yeah if we can just get him to comment every week it just makes things nice and balanced you know i think yeah i think he's a very well-informed individual so, he, he uh, certainly we'll, is yeah we'll we will value his input we so. will i've not heard of um i've not heard of his band but we'll perhaps get him to give us a little blast one day um yeah right there is another section of this show that i'm quite excited to talk about mm-hmm. Who's having a para party this week? <laughs> That's right, it's time for para party of the week. Um, I don't know if, if you're in America or uh, somewhere that's not Welsh, you might not know what a paddy is. Do you think they know, think they know oh. paddy? Paddy means tantrum, basically. It's a tantrum. It's throwing your toys out of the pram. And as we know, in the paranormal world, in the in the community, oh, oh. there's plenty of paddies. <laughs> We're not short. We're not short of a para paddy, are we? There's always somebody kicking off. Um, a so lot of drama. There's always drama. So we thought, Lindsay and I thought, we'd bring you the best of 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 the para paddies of the week. But Lindsay, what have we got? Right. Well, have you heard of Beyond the Darkness Radio? Oh, yeah, who hasn't heard of Beyond the Darkness? They are absolutely the best in paranormal absolutely, radio. Yeah. It's a brilliant show. Anyway, we had um, we had the lovely Tim Dennis having a chat with Dave Schrader, and he was reading out a story local to us here in Wales uh-huh. about some, <laughs> some friends of ours, actually, um, had done an investigation, and it had made um, headline news in Wales. It did, yeah. Uh, anyway, Tim was reading out... Um, some of these Welsh place names and he was getting into a bit of a tiz (laughs) with the pronunciation yeah yeah. it was quite amusing um we had um we had Swansea for Swansea (laughs) that's so funny Um, Swansea and we had 
we had him pronouncing Ronda as um, Rondada or something. <laughs> or Ronda. I can't remember. Ronda. Ronda. It, it was hilarious. <laughs> and he got into quite a tears. And um, anyway, you commented on the Facebook thread that ensued after. and um, I did. I did. Um, right. So... Um, he basically <laughs> he basically said in huge capital letters, "Get some effing vowels." <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> he said he has got his cousin, and her name is Rhonda, and he didn't run round Rhonda all his life, going, "Hey, Rhonda, Rhonda." <laughs> <laughs> so he says he's not the one with the problem. And apparently we've got a problem because there's only actually seven vowels in the Welsh language. Oh so dear, it he sounds like he really... gave his cousin a hard time anyway. Yeah, it does. It sounds like he was mean to his cousin if he was chasing after her, calling her anything. And he threw his toys out of the pram because he couldn't pronounce the Welsh <laughs> words. Now I can't talk because I pronounced... <laughs> Illinois. Illinois is it, it, what did I say? Oh, I can't even remember. I called so I think we we're, we're kind of let we're kind of even. Uh, now, we're even. We? We're even. So we can't really <laughs> criticize lovely Tim. Um but what I would like to say is next time guys that you have any kind of Welsh names that you can't pronounce on the show, please please give us a call and we'd be happy to help you with the pronunciation. Um, on that and also um, the guys they were talking about a paranormal now a team in South Wales and it's um, right. Richard and Jared and they've agreed to come on our podcast very kindly and give us an interview so oh, yeah. we can get them to pronounce those even more even more tough names that um, the hospital names that I think even I can't get my tongue around that well um, so it was quite exciting but yeah that was the parapaddy of the week. <laughs> thank you, Tim. So, yeah, thank you, Tim. And thank you, Dave. And, you know, if any of our listeners have heard of a parapaddy that they'd like us to highlight, please send us a message. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And talking about sending us messages, you, if you're thinking, how do we do that? We've set up a, a Facebook page, especially for the show. So look for Dead Creepy Podcast Wales UK on Facebook. Mm-hmm. At I Dead think we've Creepy. got. I think we've got seven likes already, haven't we? <gasps> oh, we're so excited! We've already <laughs> got seven likes. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. You're gonna. You don't know about this. We've actually had our first email. No way. Yeah, well, Facebook message, is that the same as email? Oh, well, brilliant. We, we've had a message, so we've already got a fan before we've even got out there. Um, so I'm going to read it out. Um, since oh, he's brilliant. On. I can't wait. Is I know. It, is this it someone is we show. know? No, it's not, as, it's not anybody we know. Um, his it's name, a genuine listener. Well, he must be. He has to yeah. be. I mean, I would imagine he is. He's, he's obviously a, fa- a fan. Um, and his name is Dr. V.R. Gray Celares. Uh, so he does, doesn't sound oh, he's Welsh. Not Welsh. No, he's definitely not no. Welsh. Um, anyway, he said, um, he actually sent us a link that he'd like us to watch, um, but I couldn't open it. So apologies to you, Dr. V.R. Gray. Um, my Norton antivirus wouldn't allow me to open that. Um, but he said, would we like his help in improving our performance? Um, right, that's a nice offer, but, you know, maybe, we're new to this. So. We are new. Maybe he heard our appeal about audio problems earlier in the show. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that Dr. Celares has sent us some kind of link to an easy way to podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but Glide, Gliding into podcasting. Glide into, yeah, how to glide easily into podcasting for... <laughs> <laughs> so really grateful for that contact because uh, you don't you don't want to sound wooden do you oh my god if we do sound wooden that'd be that'd be so awful wouldn't it? i nearly swore then that would be bad <laughs> so you know if i hope he's listening and that he uh, sends us another message with a, a um more more tips on on improving our performance so thank you for that and if anyone else thank is you. listening 
um, you know, be, be, please be nice to us. It is our first podcast. We're not experts. We're just two sisters who are fascinated with the paranormal. We do have a lot of experience between us um, as well. Um, that We're just doing this for fun. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, what we thought we'd do is say goodbye to you soon and keep it nice, short and sweet. We'll say love you and leave you. And we will leave you with a creepy bedtime story. What do you think, Lynn? That's that. That sounds absolutely perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do is say goodbye and thank you very, very much for listening. I hope you tune in next time. And goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Thank you for listening. This is the story of Mary Worth. She lived deep in the forest, in a tiny cottage, and sold herbal remedies for a living. Folks living in the town nearby called her Bloody Mary and said she was a witch. None dared cross the old crone for fear that their cows would go dry, their food stores rot away before winter, their children take sick of fever or any number of terrible things that an angry witch could do to her neighbours. Then the little girls in the village began to disappear, one by one. No one could find out where they had gone. Grief-stricken families searched the woods, the local buildings, and all the houses and barns. But there was no sign of the missing girls. A few brave souls even went to Bloody Mary's home in the woods to see if the witch had taken the girls. But she denied any knowledge of the disappearances. Still, it was noted that her haggard appearance had changed. She looked younger, more attractive. The neighbours were suspicious, but they could find no proof that the witch had taken their young ones. Then came the night when the daughter of the miller rose from her bed and walked outside following an enchanted sound that nobody else could hear. The miller's wife had a toothache and was sitting up in the kitchen treating the tooth with a herbal remedy when her daughter left the house. She screamed for her husband and they followed the girl out of the door. The miller came running in his nightshirt and together they tried to restrain the girl but she kept breaking away from them and heading out of town. The desperate cries of the miller and his wife woke the neighbours. They came to assist the frantic couple. Suddenly, a sharp-eyed farmer gave a shout and pointed toward a strange light at the edge of the woods. A few townsmen followed him out into the field and saw Bloody Mary standing beside a large oak tree, holding a wand that was pointed towards the miller's house. She was glowing with an unearthly light as she set her evil spell upon the miller's daughter. The townsmen grabbed their guns and their pitchforks and ran towards the witch. When she heard the commotion, Bloody Mary broke off her spell and fled back into the woods. 
the far-sighted farmer had loaded his gun with silver bullets in case the witch ever came after his daughter. So now he took aim and shot at her. The bullet hit Bloody Mary in the hip and she fell to the ground. The angry townsmen leapt upon her and carried her back into the field where they built a huge bonfire and burnt her at the stake. As she burned, Bloody Mary screamed a curse at the villagers. If anyone mentioned her name aloud before a mirror, she would send her spirit to revenge herself upon them for her terrible death. When she was dead, the villagers went into the house in the wood and found the unmarked graves of the little girls the evil witch had murdered. She had used their blood to make herself young again. From that day to this, anyone foolish enough to chant Bloody Mary's name three times before a darkened mirror will summon the vengeful spirit of the witch. It is said that she will tear their bodies to pieces and rip their souls from their mutilated bodies. The souls of these unfortunate ones will burn in torment as Bloody Mary once was burned herself and they will be trapped forever in the mirror.